Hi there, it's Mark Wickersham here. I'm a chartered accountant, and since selling my county practice in 2006, I've become passionate about helping other accountants build more successful and more profitable and more enjoyable accounting firms. In this short video, I'll share with you the one word that's key to building a great team of people. But before I do that, if you've not already done so, I recommend you subscribe to this channel. It's free and really easy to do. Simply click the subscribe button above this video, and when you do, YouTube will let you know when I upload any new videos. So what's that one word? It's trust. Trust is the glue that holds every successful organisation together. Trust between colleagues, between employees and managers, and trust in the organisation itself. Without it, things can fall apart in a very messy way. When you do have a culture of trust, it brings all kinds of benefits. People are more willing to try out a new idea because they trust where it came from. They help out other members of the team because they trust them to offer help in return. They keep on doing a great job even when times are hard because they trust the organisation to do the right thing. So what can you as a leader do to build trust in your team? It's actually quite a complex process and involves creating trust in both individuals and in your firm itself. There isn't time to go into it in great detail here, so I'm just going to focus on four areas where, if you get it right, you can really make a difference and start to boost the levels of trust in your team. And remember, this applies to clients too. If you want to earn their trust, which I hope you do, taking note of and acting in these areas will make a difference with them as well. So, number one is sending out consistent messages. It's often unintentional, but the consequences of being inconsistent are just the same as if you meant it to happen. When you say, we're going to have a team brainstorming session every month, and then cancel a second or third or fifth because you're too busy. When you talk about restructuring team roles but nothing changes. When one team member gets different information about pay reviews to another. In all these cases, you may think that you didn't promise anything, that it wasn't set in stone. But is that what your team heard? Before you make an announcement, think through the implications of what you're saying and how your message could be misinterpreted. Be honest with yourself about whether you really can fulfil the promise you're making and make sure that everyone gets the same message, whoever they are and wherever they are in your firm. Number two is living up to the values of your firm. This really follows on from number one. Any discrepancy between the stated values of your firm and the reality will lose you trust straight away. For example, if you claim to care about work-life balance, but do nothing about your team spending long hours at their desks, there's a very obvious discord. If you claim to be proactive on behalf of your clients, but in reality never phone them unless they phone you first, there's another. It really boils down to meaning what you say and acting accordingly. Number three is being honest and open. Nothing erodes trust more quickly than a culture of closed doors, secret meetings, rumour and gossip. It's human nature to speculate on what's going on, and when we don't have any facts, very often we imagine the worst case scenario, which may bear no relation to reality. Whether it's a difficult HR problem, poor financial results, or even the possibility of redundancies, it pays to be as open and honest about it as you can. Where there are issues of confidentiality, as with HR, you can still acknowledge that the issue exists without giving away every detail. For your team to trust the leadership of your firm, they have to know that you'll tell them the truth and not shy away from awkward situations. It isn't always easy, but it really is essential. And number four is trusting others. Trust works both ways. It starts with you. Put your trust in your team and they're far more likely to trust you back. After all, when someone says to you, I'm absolutely confident you can do this job, it's a great feeling, isn't it? And as human beings, we want to reciprocate that trust, don't we? Which brings us to delegation. I know that for the perfectionists and the workaholics out there, delegation's a dirty word, but it doesn't have to be. Unless you delegate, you're really limiting what your firm can achieve. And when it comes to trust, failing to delegate means that your firm can't trust you to help them develop and grow. A recipe for an unhappy, demotivated, unproductive team. If you have proper systems in place, delegation can be managed so that every job is done to the same high standard as you do it yourself. So make sure your systems are up to scratch and put your trust in your team. Did you know it's really easy to share YouTube videos with your business colleagues and friends? All you have to do is click on the share button below. You can then copy and paste the link into an email or into discussion groups. 
Finally, if you want to learn more proven strategies for building a successful, profitable and sustainable accounting practice, why not join the Accountants Club? To find out more, just click on the button you can now see on the screen. Thank you so much for watching this video.